All right, so three friends are ready to be photographed. The different ways they arrange themselves is a permutation. So let's, let, let's list the different possibilities, right? So we have three friends. Um, we're going to be totally generic, and we're going to call them A, B, and C, okay? And they're getting ready to be photographed. Um, so how could they, what are the different ways that they could line up? Well, it could be A first, then B, then C. Or it could be A, C, B. Or it could be B, A, C, right? So the way I do it is, okay, all the ways where A is in the front, and now all the ways where B is in the front, it's B, A, C. Or if B is in the front, it could be B, C, A. Or all the ways C is in the front, C, A, B, C, B, A, okay? Any other different ways? There are no different ways to arrange them. So each of these is a permutation. That means here there are six permutations. Right? It's an arrangement where order is important. So ABC is different from ACB. All right? Now, in order to occupy the three positions, there are three candidates for the first position two candidates for the second and one for the third, right? So let's think about what this means. So imagine they would each have to stand in one of these squares in order to be photographed, okay? So um, how many, so between A, B, and C, right? How many different candidates are there to go in square number one? Three different candidates. And then suppose one goes in square number one. And now there are two candidates to go in square number two. And let's say that guy goes in square number two. And now there is one candidate to go in there. Okay? So the total number of possibilities, do you remember the counting principle from last time? The total number of possibilities is three times two times one equal to six. Okay? Um, and this was like um, the counting principle from yesterday. The fundamental counting principle. Not yesterday, but like last lesson. Okay, let's talk about a factorial. Okay? We, um, you learn about factorials in, sometime in middle school or in algebra or in pre-algebra, and then we forget what it is. Um, the factorial of a positive integer n, okay, is written like this. It's n exclamation, right? So for example, yes, so for example, it's like three exclamation. So when I see that, I'm not, it's not like three, it's not like you're excited about a three, right? That's like a, a math symbol, right? Um, so it's the product of the positive integers less than or equal to n. So, n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 dot 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 all the way up to 1. So, what does that mean? Suppose we had 6 factorial, okay? That would be n, that number, 6 times that number minus 1, right, times that first number minus 2, 4, basically you just keep going until you hit 1. That's 6 factorial. So, right, but and then you're multiplying all the numbers though. Right. So like 20 factorial would be 20 times 19 times 18 times 17, da 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 da, da times 2 times 1. Okay? All the way to 1. If you're going from like 2018, you all go the all way. the way to 1. You multiply 2018 numbers. Okay? Yeah. Using factorials in the ex um using the factorials in the example above, right? If it's here, there are um here, sorry. There are, so look, it's 3 times 2 times 1. So what factorial is that? 3 factorial, right? So in the example above, there are 3 factorial, which is 6 possibilities. Okay? 
Because <clears throat> first we have three, then two, then one, and if you multiply them, you get six. Right? So to occupy the first position, there were three possibilities, then two, then one, and that's six. Okay, so take a look at this example. Shanice and Renee are members of a lacrosse team. If the 20 girls on the team, right, so that's important that there are 20 girls on the team, are each assigned a jersey number from 1 to 20 at random, what is the probability, okay, what is the probability, you know, here's a new word, that Shanice's jersey will be 1 and Renee's will be 2. Okay, so here's what we do, okay? There are 20 girls, right? So first we want to do is figure out sample space. Sample space is total number of possibilities. Okay, all right, so let's think about this for a minute. There are 20 girls, right? So suppose those are all the girls and it goes up to 20, okay? And they're getting numbers from 1 to 20. So the first girl, right, how many possibilities does she have for her number? How many picks does she have for her number? 20. From 20. Then she picks a number. How many possibilities does the next girl have? 19 then 18, and so on, and this will go all the way to 1. So if you're multiplying 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, da 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 3, 2, 1, that's 20 factorial, okay? So that's the total possible outcomes. Okay? Now, let's talk about this. Favorable outcome. Okay, so let's talk about favorable outcomes. All right, what is a favorable outcome? This is what you want. What is it that we want? We want Shanice to be 1 and Renee to be 2. Okay? So let's say we fix that. So here are the 20 girls. This is the first two. Suppose this is Shanice uh, and this is Renee. I want Shanice to be a 1 and Renee to be a 2. So I'm the coach and I fix that. Okay, like there was some competition and they won and now they get to pick their numbers. Shanice picks one, Renee picks two. And now, right, and then for the rest, there are 18 factorial possibilities. Okay. So, these are the favorable outcomes and that's the sample space. So, the probability... is favorable outcome over sample space. So that's 18 factorial over 20 factorial. Okay. <clears throat> let's let's think about what that is. Sometimes it blows up, so let's let's do this. This is 18, look, 18 times 17 times 16, blah, 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 right? What is this? 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times blah, 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 right? Yeah, you did, you did on Alex. So look, this is going to go from 18 to 1, right? This is going to go from 18 to 1, right? Can I cancel them out? I can cancel this whole thing with that. So it's 1 over 20 times 19. 
Oh. Yeah, it's 1 over 380. So that's the probability that if we do it at random, Shanice will get a 1 and Renee will get a 2. 1 out of 380. Isn't that cool? Okay. So in this next one, there are five people in a room, but only three chairs. Sucks for two, right? How many different seating arrangements are there? Okay. So how many candidates are there for the first chair? For the first chair, there are five candidates, four for the second, and three. So that's five times four times three, 60. All right. We can do factorials again to describe this situation. Um, almost. Okay. <clears throat> huh? So, um, we could do, right, exactly. So, right, exactly, just like that. But look, we can do factorials because if there were, if there were five chairs for the five people, there would be five factorial possibilities. Okay? But that's too many. How much is too many? Look, five times four times three times two times one. How, what, how much is there? Five times four times three, right? The two times one, that's extra. Is that right? So what you could do is, you could do five factorial divided by 2 factorial to take it out. Okay. Yeah, so that takes us into permutations. Okay, the number of... Yeah, well right now, yeah, I want to leave it as 5 over 2 factorial, yeah. The number of, okay, so let's talk about permutations, right? How many different ways we could line people up? The permutations of n distinct objects taken r at a time is denoted by this, oops, is denoted by this, and the formula is this. Okay, so n distinct objects, so total and then the number chosen. So suppose you have 30 students and you're going to choose 20. Suppose you have 400 applicants and you're going to choose 200, right? 10 numbers in a hat, you're going to choose 5, right? The permutations is given by that formula. So that's n factorial over n minus r factorial. Okay, all right, let's take a look at this example. <clears throat> so, um, okay, a class is divided into teams, each made of 15 students. Each team is directed to select um, team members to be officers. Okay, Sam, Valencia, and Deshane are on a team. Three people on a team. And the positions are decided at random. Okay. What is the probability that they are selected as president, vice president, and secretary, respectively? So there are three people on a team. Okay. And you're going to assign each of them a random position. What is the probability that Sam gets president, Valencia gets vice president, and Deshane gets secretary. Okay? So, the probability is always favorable 
outcomes, which is what you want, versus the sample space, which is the total possibilities. I always do sample space first. So one, let's find out sample space. Okay. Okay. So there are 15 students total. What is the probability? Um, how many total ways are there? Sam gets to be president, Valencia vice president, and so on. So, right. So this is probability of n and r okay so it's n p r so basically you have 15 total and you're choosing three okay so this is p 15 3 and that'll be 15 factorial over 15 minus 3 factorial. So that's 15 factorial over 12 factorial. And now look, this is 15 times 14 times 13 times 12, 11, dot, 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 over 12, 11, dot, dot, dot. So the 12 and the 11s cancel. So I just have five, uh, 15 times 14 times 13. Yes. Now, let me, okay, so how about, how many favorable outcomes are there? How many different cases are going to make us happy? Is it three or one? Oh, one. One. Okay. Because, um, right, because I the only case that's going to make me happy is if, you know, Sam gets this, Valencia gets that, the Shane gets that. So the probability is one out of two, seven, three, zero. Okay, what's important when we do probability is no decimals. We're not allowed decimals. Always fractions. All right, so let's, um, let's think about what we did. First, the sample space. So first we chose how many different ways how many different ways can we choose three people out of the 15, right? So this was different ways to choose three out of 15. Okay, questions? All right. <coughs> so what if you have repetitions? What if you're choosing like different things like different marbles out of a bag but you, you but you can repeat so for example like you have many red ones many blue ones and so on and so forth right okay so this is the formula for that one um the number of permutations of n objects right in which um, object is repeated, like one object is repeated R1 times, another is repeated R2 times, and so on. That's the new formula here. Okay, look at this example. You're on a game show. You're given the following letters and are asked to unscramble them to name a U.S. river. If you selected the permutation of these letters at random, what is the probability that it would spell the correct answer of Mississippi? So what is the probability that first you get an M and now you get an I? See, it's different now because you've got like 
much like you've got three eyes in the bag you don't just have one you see yeah, that so like what's the probability what's the probability okay what's the probability that you get m one time uh, m the first time one out of eleven okay now what's the probability that you get i for the second one four out of ten you see how it switches it's not you have one but then what's the probability that you get s the second the third time Four out, four, out four out of nine. Now you could you could go and you could do this one by one. That's just silly because what if you're working with like hundreds of things? Or you could just do the formula. So take a look. How many times? How many times is I repeated? Four. Four times. That means R one is four. Okay, in the formula. Okay, what else is repeated? Um, just because it was the first one, yeah. Okay, then then I, I go down the list. S is another one that's repeated. How many times is S repeated? Four times. So R2 is four. P, two times. R3 is two. And are there any other repetitions? There are not. So, the probability, right? Okay, so what's the sample space? So let's do sample space. That's all of the possible outcomes. That's going to be n factorial over r1 factorial, r2 factorial, r3 factorial. n is the total number, which we said was 11 factorial over 4 factorial, 4 factorial, 2 factorial. Okay. So this is, yeah, 11 times 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and then it's 4 factorial after that, over 4 factorial, 4 factorial, 2 factorial. So, the last four factorial cancels with one of these. So, I have that mess to put on my calculator. And I get, so, yeah. Oh, you just, oh, okay. Is there a way to put factorial in here? Yeah. Um, I'll tell you. So, this one is, I'll tell you in a minute. So, this one is 34,650 ways. Okay. What's the, how many favorable outcomes do we have? One because it's only it's the one case where I spell Mississippi. Right. So the probability, correct, one over thirty-four thousand six hundred and fifty. So that's the probability that if you just pick letters at random, eleven letters of, at random, you're gonna spell Mississippi. It's worth a try, no? <clears throat> okay, so to put it in the calculator, so you would do, let's say, three, and then if you go in math, let me stop this, um, a combination is an arrangement of objects in which order is not important, okay? So suppose you need a you need to pack three of your eight different pairs of socks on a trip, okay? Does it matter the order in which you select them? Like, does it matter if you pick a green one first, then a pink, then a purple? If you're just going to toss it in your bag? It doesn't matter, right? That's a combination. So permutation, order matters. Combination, order doesn't matter. Okay. So, um... So here, so suppose you choose like three at random, right? So look, you could have chosen this three in this order, or you could have chosen them purple first, or the red and blue first, or in this order, or in this order, or in this order. So there are six different ways where you choose the same number of three, right? 
So what you do is you take the number of permutations and you divide by 6.